Hello again. Welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program made possible by the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, a, pro a project of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case uh, today uh, comes from uh, some of the uncommonly encountered uh, GI cases that uh, cross our desk from time to time. Uh, this, a 45-year-old woman with diarrhea and a history of some autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So here's the uh, biopsies. And as you can see, we've got two good-sized fragments here, uh, small but uh, respectable in size. And uh, as we go to higher magnification here, uh, hone in on these, we, we can see that uh, this looks like we're coming from the antrum. Uh, we have primarily uh, uh, foveolar tissue and more uh, mucinous type glands here, no parietal or chief cells. Uh, so we're in the antrum. And uh, as we look at this, we see we've got a little area of depression here, uh, maybe with some epithelial damage. And then we've got this little hyaline change uh, beneath the epithelium here. So let's hone in on that. We do see some eosinophils and mixed inflammation here. Um, but as we look at the uh, surface epithelium, I think we can see there may be a few scattered uh, inflammatory cells within the epithelium, not acute inflammatory cells. Um, and then just this slight degree of hyalinization uh, with a little depression here uh, along this uh, 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 basal lamina or a plate area just beneath the uh, uh, surface epithelium. And here we can see the surface epithelium has lost cytoplasm. Uh, the cells uh, are uh, sh shrunken in size, and there's a little bit of associated inflammation and damage to those epithelial cells. It's not very striking, uh, but it is present. We'll look at the other fragment here, of course, to uh, in expand our completeness here. Um, and as we can see, we do have a little bit of uh, sparse inflammation in the lamina propria. Uh, might make you wonder about uh, some chronic gastritis. Uh, but again, we've got a little bit of surface damage. And then here, this area of sort of slightly depressed and very fibrinoid or fibrotic appearing uh, sub-epithelial uh, area. Uh, here's a little bit more epithelial cell damage. We can see more uh, intraepithelial inflammatory cells here uh, as we look a little closer. And again, we notice the eosinophils. Loss of cytoplasm, uh, somewhat subtle. Um, and uh, again, uh, some fibrosis uh, here. So um, I'm considering a diagnosis of um, collagenous uh, gastritis. Um, and probably would do a trichrome stain in this setting to see if that highlights this uh, fibrotic area uh, in these uh, lesions. Well, uh, let's take a look at a related case, uh, also uh, purported to be uh, collagenous uh, gastritis, and see what other uh, changes we might see in, in some of these cases. Uh, here's another example of uh, a zone of slightly increased uh, inflammation here, um, a zone of hyaline fibrosis along the uh, subbasal lamina area. Um, and then I think we can see there's evidence of uh, inflammation, loss of cytoplasm in some of these cells. Now, this uh, inflammatory change in the epithelium is uh, not as striking as uh, we tend to require or see more commonly in uh, collagenous colitis elsewhere, as such as in the colon or in the small bowel. Uh, but in conjunction with the uh, basal lamina fibrosis, uh, the subjacent uh, uh, changes, I think we can uh, reliably uh, rest on that diagnosis. So let's look at uh, uh, what we see with this. Well. Uh, in general, the histologic appearance with collagenous gastritis is similar to that seen elsewhere. Um, interestingly, though, the clinical demographics are somewhat different. So in addition to the usual adult populations, which may present with diarrhea or 
uh, involvement of uh, multiple sites in the uh, GI tract. Uh, there's also this pediatric uh, group that tends to present in the early teens uh, with some degree of anemia and uh, associated abdominal pain. Now, anemia is not a, chronic, a, a usual symptom um, with uh, the adult type, um, uh, which also may be associated with some of the autoimmune diseases, such as in our patient today. In the stomach, uh, there tends to be a, a degree of nodularity uh, sometimes seen, uh, but it also may appear slightly depressed. And you remember our first slide, which had that slight area of uh, depression. Uh, in the uh, GI stomach, the inflammation may be fairly minimal and uh, involvement may be rather patchy. So it can be something that uh, suffers from inability to detect it appropriately. Let's look at some more examples. Um, here's another uh, slide here. And uh, again, here we notice just a very subtle but definite uh, increase in the subepithelial uh, collagen layer. And then notice again that uh, there's some evidence of damage because the epithelial cells are somewhat sloughed. And so I'm not sure this is going to come into focus, may not have been scanned well. Uh, so it doesn't uh, light up and uh, highlight that very well. Yet in this other fragment, really, we don't see the changes here at all. And so it can be patchy. Uh, let's take another example. Uh, again, biopsies. Um, now, distribution in the stomach is uh, most common in the antrum, uh, not as common in the uh, fundus, but not impossible for you to see it there. Here we can see again uh, this uh, thickening of the uh, uh, prominence of the collagen here in this subepithelial layer. Uh, we have some loss of cytoplasm, not much inflammation, uh, and just a little bit of damage there. So the inflammatory component may be relatively minimal, uh, but the hyaline uh, fibrotic change uh, should be evident to you. Uh, can you take one more example? Uh, not as well stained here, but I think this is actually intended to be a uh, stain for collagen, which as you can see here, highlights the thickening of this uh, basal lamina collagen uh, in uh, these areas of the stomach. So uh, trichrome stain or other collagen stain can be helpful. So one additional example here, uh, let's take a look again. Here's a trichrome stain. Um, and I think you can see here uh, that we are getting that thickening uh, of the uh, collagenous tissue uh, that we would uh, expect to see with a collagenous uh, gastritis, collagenous uh, sprue or uh, duodenitis uh, or colitis. So trichrome stain can be useful. Let's look at the other fragment here. Uh, again, here we see uh, this uh, prominence in the subsurface zone of this uh, collagenized tissue. And then here, very striking Oh, isn't that beautiful? Uh, that's one of the nice things about pathology is the varied colors you get to appreciate. Uh, so there you see the very nice picture uh, of the uh, hyper uh, collagenous tissue. And uh, let's go on to the next uh, slide and see if we can wrap this up. So uh, again, to highlight the key histologic findings, you want to look for surface epithelial damage, but it may be less pronounced than elsewhere in the GI tract. Look for increased intraepithelial uh, inflammatory cells. Again, may be less pronounced than elsewhere. And then have a high, uh, have a, a low threshold, excuse me, to do uh, collagen stains uh, to detect the thick thickening of the collagen table beneath the surface epithelium. So our final di sign out diagnosis today is collagenous gastritis um, in a woman with a history of autoimmune thyroiditis. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, case and that you'll, if you like it, you'll uh, comment below. Uh, also, please note that these slides are available for uh, review and uh, check uh, the listing in the uh, uh, comment section or the uh, information section of the video uh, and follow the link there so that you can personally review 
the digital slide examples from today's cases. Uh, well, I hope that's been good for you, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time.